Well, it's been a pretty astonishing week. I've been following the Trump train all around the United States of America. I've been to Arizona, I've been to Michigan, Pennsylvania, and some other eastern seaboard states. Uh, it's been remarkable, astonishing. I mean, there you are. You're at an airfield base waiting. An Air Force One appears on the horizon and it touches down. And the music plays. Queens, We Are the Champions, Phil Collins, something in the air tonight. David Bowie. Interesting, nearly every singer was born in England. I'm told that Trump chooses the music himself, and then the guy arrives, he walks up the catwalk. They're going bonkers, they're screaming, we love you, and you know what? They actually, genuinely, really do. I think ever since the second debate, the guy's been on fire. I mean, literally been on fire. In fact, he's been in the best form I've ever, ever seen him in. And it's really odd, being the only foreigner at these rallies of 30, 40,000 people. And it's really odd, the Trump base. I mean, they're bigger Brexiteers <laughs> that I've got in the Brexit party. They're true believers. Uh, and the president himself, um, at every rally I went to, somehow sort of pointed me out in the crowd. He even got me up on the stage in Arizona. And I've been a huge supporter of Trump for the last four years. And I know that sometimes his manner and his style upset people. You know, he's pretty blunt. He's a New Yorker, after all. But his instincts on the big stuff are really, really good. You know, he doesn't want global bureaucracy to be national democracy. He's turned America from a warmongering nation into being a peace broker around the world. And he also gets that it's the small men and women out there who've been just pushed aside, pushed aside by the corporates, and indeed during this pandemic. Clearly, there was a, some moments of euphoria here in the Trump Hotel on the night of the election until Fox News, of all people, called Arizona for Biden. And I never thought I'd see a Republican crowd booing Fox News, but they did on that night. Now, to accuse people of electoral fraud is one thing, but you have to prove it. What we know from 20 years of bitter experience ever since the great Tony Blair introduced wide-scale postal voting in Britain is that it's open to fraud. It's open to intimidation. There are massive problems with verification. Just last year, uh, the Brexit Party fought a by-election in Peterborough. We lost by 600 votes. We saw things like, on polling day, somebody with a carrier bag bringing 1,000 ballots into a polling station. We knocked on doors where people told us that they had actually effectively had their ballots, their blank ballot papers, taken from them. And yet, when we went back uh, to try and get them, swear affidavits, the doors weren't opening. We lost the case, but we have seen, haven't we, in Tower Hamlets, in Birmingham, in the north, many other parts of the country, we've seen people going to prison over the course of the last 20 years. The French, very sensibly, don't allow postal voting because they're aware of this risk. So as we speak, there are people out in Philadelphia, in Michigan, uh, out there, trying to find out, trying to find evidence of, you know, were, for example, postmarks falsely put on late ballots. You know, did, were people intimidated in handing over their blank papers? My guess and my hunch is that they are going to find a considerable amount of evidence. What that means that when this gets up to the Supreme Court, I haven't got a clue. I simply don't know where this goes. I don't know whether there are going to be reballots. I don't know whether there's going to be a president sorted out in time for the inauguration. If there isn't, then Donald Trump will actually stay in place after the 20th of January because of the 12th Amendment of the US Constitution. It's difficult to see where this goes. It's tough for the Trump team. They're out there trying their best to prove fraud. If they can, fine. If they can't, well, we've got a Biden presidency, but a very weak Biden presidency. And that's, that's the reason the stock market's going through the roof, because he didn't get the Senate. He won't be able to put through massive tax hikes and other very damaging economic basically socialist measures. Uh, if it is a Biden presidency, then I want to tell you this. Donald Trump has 69 million supporters. These aren't just people that put crosses on pieces of paper. These are fanatical supporters. And my every sense of me is this guy will not do what former presidents do, because they go to Long Island and drink coffee and play golf. Trump ain't doing that. Trump is going to keep fighting. And he's still the leader of the Republican Party. He's still the best choice they've got. And the inroads, the inroads he's made in this campaign into Latino voters and black voters is, I think, a trend that's here to stay. Indeed, 
at the election party here in the Trump Hotel, a group of rappers arrived with full body art, and everyone told me, wow, Nigel, this is a, these guys are a big deal. I'd never heard of any of them, but hey, maybe that's my age. So I think he's here to stay. Uh, I think if he, if, if he does turn out that he's lost, I don't doubt for a minute he's going to fight again in 2024. So it's been an amazing week. It's been a huge experience, uh, a big disappointment in the end on the evening. Um, and I'm flying back in a minute to Lockdown UK. And at least in America, there's been a debate. You know, Biden wants to lock America down, wants to do what Boris has done and what many other European countries have done. Trump says, no, we can't do this. We can't afford to do this. The cure is worse than the disease. And the Americans at least have had a debate about this. What have we had? All right, there are some Tory rebels. But, you know, over 500 parliamentarians have voted for us to be in lockdown. It came in last night. It is not just catastrophic for small and medium-sized businesses because if the local shop's closed and you want to buy a pair of shoes, go to Amazon. You see, it's the big, big companies that are winning. It's the little people that are losing. And as for health, you know, when you see these figures, such as lung cancer diagnoses down by 75%, uh, you, know, you realise that actually the health cost is going to be even worse uh, than it would be of people dying from or with COVID-19. And as for civil liberties, well, I mean, are we just prepared to lock ourselves up and live under house arrest? Well, I guess that's what I've got two weeks of, because I'm going to have to quarantine. Although, given that the pubs are closed, I suppose there's nowhere to go anyway, really, is there?